beautiful and historic as it is, London is right up there with Tokyo as one of the most horribly expensive places to live. Wouldn't it be sweet to have a home in the city center in the shadow of these fine landmarks? Uh, my daily commute is probably one of the best commutes in the <laughs> world of commuting. Judith Lyons is a mother of three and works as a midwife at nearby St. Thomas's Hospital. She gets there by taking a 15-minute walk along the south bank of the River Thames. We actually tend to spend a lot of time down here. How can a family earning a moderate income live in a five-bedroom, sleekly designed house in such a hot part of town? Judith's place is part of a housing cooperative owned by Coin Street Community Builders, a nonprofit set up to provide locals with cheap places to live. This area of London was badly damaged during the German Blitz, and the post-war years saw a sharp decline in the local population. In the 1970s, a huge site that abutted the river turned up on the radar of developers who could see financial potential in this mostly derelict area. The developers wanted 16 large-scale office buildings along the riverfront. We knew that we didn't like the decline of the area. Uh, we didn't like the sort of um, plans for monolithic um, office blocks, um, the, the sort of idea that this became a single type of um, use area. What Ian Tuckett and other local residents saw instead was the chance to transform the neighborhood while keeping it in the hands of people who already live there. Three decades ago, the group honed their argument that building a residential community of differing income levels was more important than putting up office blocks and set about persuading top politicians of the wisdom of their plan. In 1984, the City of London agreed to sell the property to this neighborhood group for the bargain price of about one and a quarter million dollars. The newly named Coin Street Community Builders took out a mortgage for the land. After about a seven-year campaign, we were able to purchase um, this 13-acre site and put the infrastructure in and then build, start building the housing that brought the local population. Okay, they had the land, but where would they get the cash to start building? From the beginning, members of the Coin Street nonprofit felt they wanted to raise this money on their own terms. We didn't ever want to be dependent on government grants and... Um, you know, uh, the, the, the sort of dependencies you get and, and then find, you know, there are no freedoms left. Coin Street now generates about $7 million per year from stores, galleries, cafes, and one very fancy restaurant on their property. Any profit that we make gets plowed back into the business. They've used that profit to build four housing complexes, 220 homes that don't look anything like drab public housing units typical in Britain or America. For a spot here, applicants must have strong ties to the area and earn just a modest income. There's also an effort to help people live near jobs that provide crucial public services, like Judith Lyons, the midwife. Coin Street owns the buildings, and they're managed by the residents, who get to set their own levels of rent. It's about 115 pounds a week currently, and we try to keep it as, li as, as low as possible. And this is our bedroom. That's less than a thousand U.S. dollars a month, but still over a third of her take-home pay for rent. We look at how much money we need to raise each year uh, to pay our bills, to pay our lease charges, maintenance, and um, we decide how much rent that we that we le levy for ourselves. It's about quarter. Of, of the rent that you'll pay if you have a similar sized flat um, in this area. After the war, Britain invested heavily in government subsidized housing. But in the 1980s, Conservative Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher gave people in public housing the option to purchase their homes. Many of the residents resold them on the open market, which also caused a reduction in affordable living spaces. To prevent this happening in Coin Street, the residents aren't allowed to buy. But that's been an accepted part of the whole deal from the beginning. It means that the housing stock quite often comes available to anyone who's in housing need who's got a connection from this area. But urban planning almost always involves conflicting agendas. 